So today we'll be talking about negative angles. So you can see negative angles is something like negative theta, or you have something like negative 300. So how do we approach questions that has negative angles in there? So the first thing you need to know about negative angles is that you can treat negative angles like they're in the fourth quadrant. So remember we talked about quadrants where everything is positive here, that's sine, that's tan, that's cos. So in the fourth quadrant, the cos is positive. So with negative angles, I have this. And if I treat it like it's in the fourth quadrant, I understand that sine will be negative in the fourth quadrant. So is tan. However, for cos, we expect it to be positive. So this will be plus cos theta. Yeah. So this is the basics about negative angles. Now, just like you had your quadrant, your positive quadrant, you also have your negative quadrant. The formula for your negative quadrant, we have this negative theta. This is theta minus 180. This is negative theta, negative 180. And this here is theta minus 360. What this means is that if I have a question that says theta minus 360, because it's in the first quadrant, I understand my answer for this is just sine theta. Another way I could do this, if I want to go through the long step, I could bring out a negative from my identity. So I have this. Then from what we talked about before, that sine negative theta is negative sine theta. This here will be negative sine 360 minus theta. And since 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant of your positive quadrant, this here will be negative negative sine theta, which is positive sine theta. But now, if you do remember your quadrants, the equations of your negative quadrant, it can serve you well in finding questions. Okay? But if you cannot remember it, it's also cool. Try as much as possible to bring out a negative. Let's try out another question. We have tan negative theta negative 180. Now, this here kind of reminds you of 180 plus theta. I will bring out a negative from here. So since we know that neg tan negative theta is negative tan theta, I'm going to have this as. And as you know, tan is positive in the third quadrant because that's 180 plus theta. I'm just going to have this answer. So you can see that I could easily from here, I've gotten the answer to be tan negative theta and that would have been right. Or I could go through the process of bringing out a negative, making it look like one of the formulas of my positive quadrants then from there, I'll get my final answer. Those are two ways in which you can treat questions like this. I hope you guys have a better understanding of how negative angles work. Now, the next step is to do some examples of negative angles. We're going to do about three. So, these are some examples of negative angles. So, we have sine negative 225. The first step is to I answer this, I treat it like it's in my fourth quadrant. So this here is negative sine 225, first step. So the second step is to figure out which quadrant it falls under. Now, since this is 225, it falls under the third quadrant. So you use the equation of the third quadrant, which is... Then from there, the next step I'm going to do here is to use the reduction formula. Now, since sine is negative in the third quadrant, this becomes negative, negative sine 45 and simplifying that there will give you positive sine 45 since 45 is also a special angle i break that down and that there would be my final answer the same thing can be said for this next question over here now since we said we can use the quadrant but if we do not remember the quadrant we can use our negative angles the first thing we do is that we understand that this kind of looks like this one here without the negatives. So that's the first thing I do. I rewrite this in terms of 180 plus X, which is in my third quadrant. So this here can be written as, and if you think about it, multiply negative times 180, I get negative 180. Negative times S gives me negative X, which is exactly the same thing as I have over there. And the next step I'm gonna do now is I understand that for my negative angles, for cos, we treat it like the fourth quadrant. So this can also be written as 180 plus X, and 180 plus x is the formula for the third quadrant, and cos is negative in the third quadrant, 
this will be maintenance. Negative cos x, and that's it. And one last example over here is tan open bracket negative 390. So now, same story again. The first thing we're going to do is we treat it like it's in the fourth quadrant. So since this is in the fourth quadrant and tan is negative, tan 390. Now 390 is greater than 360. So the formula we use is make it 360 plus 30. That's the equation it falls under, which is this equation over here. This falls in your first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, tan is positive, so this is negative. And 30. And tan 30 is a special angle. And for this, your answer would be... And that's it. This is exactly how you use negative angles. The first thing you should always put at the back of your mind is that treat whatever you have as sieve is in the fourth quadrant. Cos is the only trig ratio that is positive. While your sine and your tan, you expect it to be negative. And that's it. So up next, we're going to be talking about complementary angles. We have other videos on trig, other sections on trig in the description below. Try as much as possible to check it out. Um, you would not be disappointed. And on your way out, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.